Hi there, and welcome back to another PSDK and Pokemon Studio tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to be covering how you can add in new options into your game and how you can add in new features around those options, basically checking if the option is enabled or what the value is set to in different lines of code so that you can give features and functionality to your options. I think a good reference for this, if you are just looking for something, would be my auto run plugin that I've created. Obviously, this is a little bit of a little self shout out or whatever. But if you go over here into plugin download, it's going to link you over here into a Mediafire link, which will give you a PSDK plugin file, which you just need to drag into your scripts folder. And then once you run PSDK for the first time, it's then going to create a plugins folder over here, add in an auto run option folder, which has three script files in here, which really tells you everything you need to know about adding in a new option. But I'm also about to show you in detail anyways. So just to show it off, um, now that I've added in this option here, there's only one thing that I really need to do, but there's kind of two things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into configs and go into our game options config, but we're gonna open it with VS code. And then we're gonna add in a comma after the last option and press enter. And then I'm gonna go into the plugin that I have added and I'm gonna go over here to the options menu. And right here in the predefined options, I can see the name of the option and I'm gonna paste that here, which has now added this option into my options. And then there's some other text that I'm gonna to need to add, but that's just because that's how I've coded this option. So I'm gonna to need to go into the CSV file 1042. I'm gonna to have to add in two lines of text into the CSV file just so that everything looks right. So to do that, I'm just gonna go into my data, text, dialogues, and go down to 1042. I'm gonna open this with VS Code. And then here it says it's 66 and 67, which really means 68 and 69, which I don't, I don't have those. So what I'm gonna do, is so I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do auto run. And then here I'm gonna say determines whether auto run is on or off, right? And then I'm just gonna make a quick little change here just so that I can show how it's gonna work. Now this is 56 and 57, which means that this is actually 54 and 55. And now if I run my, proje my project, and we go and check out our options, we're going to see some new option in there. So here you go. Now we can see here we have the auto run name with the option here. The name is also over here. So this name and this name are always going to be the same. Just so that we understand when I'm about to show you how it's actually coded. That these two names are going to be the same. But you're also going to be able to determine the names or the text that's displayed here for your choices like if I didn't want it to say on I could have it say like true I could have it say hello I could have it say whatever I wanted and then I could have off say whatever I wanted as well and then if you had even more options because you're not limited to just having two choices it doesn't have to be true or false you could actually use integers you could do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten etc and have any of those have a different name as well or different text represented and then over here as you see in the description of the option you're able to determine what that text says as well and then, of course, you can then give functionality. So I'm not holding B right now, but I'm obviously running. But then if I go over here and I go into my options and I turn this off, then I'm walking, which is the whole point of this auto run feature. So to show you how I set all of that up, now we're going to go and create our brand new option ourselves. So I would argue the first step to creating a new option is probably going to be setting up what the menu choices are going to look like. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a new folder. So we're gonna go into our scripts folder and we're gonna click over here for new folder because we're doing our menu and our options here. I think that you're gonna end up with a lot of different uh, Ruby files or a lot of script files here potentially. And so I think it's just a good idea to have them all organized in one folder. So I'm just gonna name this 00100 and then I'm gonna do menu options. You could do it like this. You could do menu underscore options and guess what? Realistically, you could even do this, menu options. And then in that folder, I'm gonna create a new file, and this is gonna be 00100 new underscore options.rb, okay? 
And then I'm just gonna paste the little template from my auto run folder or my auto run file here from my options menu. Just so you know, when you're creating a new, a new option yourself, it just needs to be put into the gameplay module and it needs to go into the options class that's inheriting from base clean update frame balanced. This right here basically allows it to where the frame rate doesn't go crazy when you open up the options menu. And then when you want to add in your new options, and so you don't overwrite the old options, we're just going to add in a new option or a new key here into the already listed hash of predefined options. So what you do is you name the hash here, which is just predefined options, all caps, and then you do an open bracket. And then we need to make a symbol or a key for our new option. This doesn't matter what it's named, it's entirely what you want it to be named. It just needs to be readable so that you know when you see it, you understand, hey, that's what this option represents. So for my example, I used toggled running choice. It could have just used running choice too, or even is auto run on, <laughs> you know, it could have been anything. Once you've decided on what this is going to be called, you're then going to close the bracket and then we're going to set an equal sign and then we're going to open up a new bracket with the same name here, the same key symbol, whatever you're going to put it here. And then we're going to do a comma. And then here you're going to have two options. You can either do a slider, which is used for, I think the background music or like whatever volume slider there is in the options. So you can use a slider, which is then going to uh, give you a value between, I think zero and 100, or you can do a choice, which then allows you to set it to true or false. You could also set it to like one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. It doesn't really matter, but uh, you can set it to whatever you want here. I just typically use true and false, but I, I believe you, you can definitely also do like one, two, three, four, five, and even more numbers. But then however many choices you have here, when we open up some new brackets over here, we're gonna see here that this section correlates to the name of the choices. So right here, 42.9 means if you go to CSV file 1042, which we have open here, and you went to the line nine, which really means 11. So if we go to line 11, we're gonna see that this means on. So this is gonna return for true the text on. Now for false, it's on the next line, we're gonna see that that says off. And so if you had more options than just true and false, if you had three and four and five, that's okay. But you're gonna need another comma and then you're gonna to have to do the text get thing. And you're gonna to have to specify the line in the uh, CSV file that it's pulling from just for every choice that you have. So once we're done with these brackets here for the choice names, over here, we have it, the actual name of the option. This is where I put auto run to represent that this choice here is auto run, which if you remember when we had our options open, it was like on top, it said auto run. And then under that, there was a description that said determines whether auto run is on or off, which I determined right here with this line. So just to go over that again, we have the symbol here, which is supposed to correlate to this. Over here, we have the option between a choice and a slider. And this array, or this list, however you know it, is gonna be the choices that you have, like the actual value, whether it's true, false, whether it's one, two, three, four, etc. That's what you would list here. And then over here, we have some double brackets, which realistically is just another, another list. And in this list, we have the text for the first option, the text for the second option. And then if I had more options, I would have those also in this list right here. Then over here, we have the name of the option. And then over here, we have the description of the option. And then again, we're gonna end it with the symbol. So after we've set all of this text and everything for our brand new option that we've created, we have to now initialize the value that we want it to start at for brand new saves. To do that, we need to go into the PFM module and then the options class. 
And then you're going to do an accessor for whatever your option was. So again, this is going to match this. The accessor is going to be trying to, uh, to read whatever this option is set to. So you want whatever you set the symbol here to match this symbol here. And then, and then we're going to create a new alias for the original initialize method. And to do that, we're going to type alias and then the name of the alias. I went with toggled button initialize. However, this could be named whatever you want. And then after that, you need the name of the original method, which was initialize. Then after that line, we're then going to define our new initialize method with all of the same stuff from the original method, which was the starting language and then the game state which was set to equal the PFM game state. And then you need to make sure that you're calling the alias, which I use toggled button initialize. However, if you name this something else, that's what you would type here. And then in parentheses, you need to copy this, what we're passing in through our initialize method, and we need to paste it and pass it through the alias so that all of the original options are being initialized how they're supposed to be. After that line, is when your new option comes in play. So here is where we're gonna name our our option. I went with toggled running choice. So I just went with at sign toggled running choice equals true because I want by default for it to be set to true. This could be set to false if you don't want it to be true or if you're using different values like one, two, three, four, five, you could put that there as well. Then we need to close all of those off with ends and then you can do save. And now our new options are being created and initialized, but now we need to add them into our config file. We did that at the beginning, but I'm going to show you how to do that again. So what we need to do is go into our project folder. We're going to go over here into data, configs, and then we're going to go into the game options config and open this with Visual Studio Code. By default, this is what it should look like. And then you're going to want to add a comma after the last option and then press enter so that we have a new line here for our new option. Whatever we're gonna put on this new line is gonna be this. So whatever you created your option key or symbol is what you need to copy. And then you need to put in quotation marks and then paste it and just ensure that you don't have the colon there. There shouldn't be a colon and then save. So by now you should have your option added into your game. It should have an initialized value and it should have all of this text that you've set it to but it's not gonna do anything yet. To add in functionality, it's honestly as simple as doing a money sign, options, period. And then whatever you set the name to. So for me, I did toggled running choice. I would literally do toggled running choice. And this little line right here is gonna give me whatever my option is set to. Just to prove it, what we're gonna do we're gonna save this. I'm gonna get rid of my plugin that I've created, right? Because I, I'm, I want it to be the same as what you guys are at. So I just deleted the plugin, I deleted the folder. Now we're gonna launch the game. And so when we launch the game and we go over here, I shouldn't be running because there's no functionality now. I've removed the functionality. All I did was add the option into my game. So if you go over here, you can see that the auto run is set to true, but I'm not running. And you can see I have the text the description, the different text over here for if it's on or off. And again, I'm still not running. It's not like I have it in reverse or anything. But um, if you did type in here, you would see that it's returning false, which that is what I have my option set to. If you remember, off represents false. But if I have it on on, and then I type it, it's gonna say true. So this is all you need to know for adding in functionality. Essentially, whenever you want something to happen, and this also applies to events. So if you want something to happen based on an option, all you need to do is go into the code whenever you're making your new code for something. You type in if, and then you could do money sign options, period, and then the symbol or the name of your option. And then that will determine whether, you know, whatever your, your choices are here is going to determine the value. And then based off of the value, you make it do different things. So if I wanted, just for a very quick example, if I wanted someone to say hello, 
when I have this option, whoops, I need to go into a conditional branch, go over here into script, and then paste it. So if I want him to say hello, when I have the option to true, then I would say it like so. And if I want him to say goodbye, when it's set to false, I would do it like this. Then when we talk to him, as you can see, when we have this set to off, he says goodbye. And when we, whoops. And then when we set it to true, he says hello. So just like that, you can add in functionality based on what the user's option is. And realistically, that's all you need to know about how to add in a brand new option. I can't go in and teach you how to make brand new code for everything, that's up to you, but now you know how to create the option, how to add it into your game, and how to add in checks based on what the option is, which I think is all the steps that I can really give you. Hopefully this video helped you out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I want to say a big special thank you to the nerd you know for supporting me over on Patreon, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.